Hello friends and welcome to this week's edition of Ipswich Town Transfer Talk. My name is Mark Heath. With me this week, Stuart Watson to break down all the latest stuff that's been happening at Ipswich Town in this summer like no other. Stu, um, and since we last spoke, there's been a slew of more names, more links, more stories, more things to get excited about. And I guess probably the, the name that most people will be getting most excited about, someone who used to play for Ipswich Town on loan not too long ago, had a little nickname, Santi from Big Mick McCarthy, Bursant Selina. Could this be happening? It's which town are interested in bringing back the dynamic, exciting winger, Stu. Bring us up to speed with what you know and what's happening with Bursant Selina. They're in for him, which is just a sign of the level of ambition of signings that it was which town are trying to make this summer. They've done some good business so far, six signings in, but it's that top end of the pitch where the signings are the most sexy and most exciting and the ones that will make the difference to the shortfalls of last season. And that is the stage of the window that we're at now. Those attacking signings that are going to make the difference with creativity and goals. And Bursant Salina would certainly do that. You would imagine he would absolutely rip up League One. And the reason that Ipswich Town find themselves potentially in a position to be able to get him is because his club, Dijon, need to offload. They've just been relegated from the top flight of French football. They gave Bursant Salina a four-year contract last September. So he's still got three years left to run on that. So they want him out. Ipswich want to get him in. There's going to be some championship interest in him. Obviously, he's played um, championship football for Ipswich. He's played championship football for Swansea. And there are clubs sniffing around him. Hull and Coventry, we understand, are two of them. But Hull are under a transfer embargo at the moment, like so many championship clubs are at the moment. After the, uh, after the COVID pandemic, they've particularly been hit. So it might all just mean that the stars align for Ipswich Town to swoop for what would undoubtedly be a uh, a real marquee signing. Yeah, and just how much damage do you think Selina would, would do in League One? He'd, he'd be a player that every other team would be terrified of, wouldn't he? You'd think so, wouldn't you? I mean, he was uh, he was a very exciting player to watch during his loan spell mm. at Ipswich. That is now three years ago, so you'd think at the age of 24 he would return a better player, a more mature player. There were some raw edges um, no doubt about that. During his time at Portman Road before, Mick McCarthy was reluctant to start him at, at times, much to the uh, chagrin of the uh, Ipswich Town fans. But you'd think he'd come back a better player this time. And if he's better than he was last time at League One, he could do some real damage. Mm. Someone else who could no doubt do some real damage in League One. Just physically, the beast, the tank that is Matt Crooks. We've got ourselves a proper transfer saga stew we've talked about this before a back and forth between town and rotherham bids other clubs involved what's the latest as, as you understand it with with mr crooks this one's getting played out quite publicly isn't it it's becoming uh the classic summer transfer saga that's going to run and run um rotherham obviously relegated from the championship matt crooks has been one of their key players for uh the last few seasons obviously Ipswich Town fans saw firsthand how good he was in League One up against them in 2019-20 in when Rotherham went up. Um, he looked good in the Championship last year. He had one month where he was named Championship Player of the Month. Goals, assists from him. Um, so can the two clubs come to a evaluation on this one? Paul Warren has been speaking regularly and quite publicly about him, saying that they're very reluctant to sell him to a League One rival. Um, they've put a figure of well well into the seven figures is is what Rotherham are saying that they value him at we understand it which have had multiple bids rejected so far started out at 400 rose to 600 I think they've gone higher again since then so my gut instinct is they'll they'll find some middle ground here at some point and if they can agree, agree a fee before those championship clubs can swoop Derby are one of the teams interested but again they're under transfer embargo um Warren's spoken about a championship club having put in a bid for him and that being rejected. So still work to be done on this one, much like the Bursant Selina deal. But again, Ipswich Town very much in the picture. And again, Matt Crooks would be a really big signing for Ipswich Town. Literally and figuratively, Crooks six foot four, bit of a tank, as I said. Um, so if those two are done, that's two, two big needs filled. Another need that we know Town are going to have to address this summer is defenders, Stu. Um, and there was another link uh, earlier this week. I think we broke the the Hayden Coulson line. What's what's the latest on on that? And, and just tell people a little bit about Mr. Coulson. Yeah, Ipswich have obviously signed one left back or one left sided 
um, player this summer in Matt Penny, who's been picked up after following his release by Sheffield Wednesday. But with Miles Kenlock, one of those players um, condemned to the under 23s at the start of pre season, you would imagine they need another left back there if Miles Kenlock is moving on. Um, Hayden Coulson is a player that we understand they're very much interested in. Um, played a reasonable amount of championship football for Middlesbrough a couple of seasons ago under Jonathan Woodgate. He was even named their young player of the season. Um, former England youth international, just found his chances a little bit limited under Neil Warnock last season. Uh, there's a feeling that perhaps he was a little bit too cavalier um, to play that fullback role under Neil Warnock, who likes his defenders to defend. Paul Cook obviously likes his fullbacks to uh, to bomb on and get forward. So Coulson is, is, is quick. He's energetic. I think he's everything that um, Paul Cook wants from his fullback. So whether that is alone or perhaps even a permanent, but I would imagine more likely to be alone and uh, he would come in to potentially be the starting left back next season. Mm -hmm. Okay, time will tell. And in terms of potential ins this week, I guess there's one more name we need to talk about since we uh, emerged since we last spoke. Arvin Appiah, um, another exciting young attacker, Stu, currently playing abroad. Um, Do you want to just tell people a little bit about this one? Yeah, story from, from Andy Warren earlier this week that it's understood that he is a player of interest to Ipswich. I don't think it's gone any further than that at the moment. Um, Mark Ashton has made it clear that um, they have multiple targets across multiple positions. So um, the club is not putting all their eggs into one basket for any position. Um, wingers is an area of the, the team that clearly they're very short on at the moment, Ipswich Town and, and Apia, Apaya, I'm not sure how we're pronouncing that, is, is one on a long list of targets for the winger. Um, he is a player that made an £8 million move uh, not that long ago from Nottingham Forest to Almeria in Spain. Um, it's not happened for him over in Spain. He's, he's found his chances limited uh, the last couple of seasons. So a return to England might be good for him. Another former England youth international. It's an interesting name, that one. Mm. Some exciting names there we've talked about, Stu. Um, before we finish this this look at inns, potential inns, it would be remiss not to mention the exclusive little sit-down chat you had with the aforementioned Mr Ashton yesterday. Uh, he told you that he wants at least five more signings in this window. But the interesting line for me was, as we approach, we start talking about the Burst St. Salinas, the Matt Crooks, um, and I know you put those names to him. But um, he said that, that the next few signings are going to be the tricky ones, the, the ones that are going to be harder to get across the line. Yeah, understandably played a straight back bat when we uh, put some specific names to him, notably Selena and, and Crooks. But there was a wry smile and a, a response of good players. <laughs> um, didn't want to say too much more about those two. But um, yeah, at least five more players. And I would imagine it's going to be more than five because we've, we've talked about a few positions there. I, I imagine that they need at least one, if not two centre backs, at least two wingers, a number 10. Um, a left back mm. and possibly another striker as well. So um, I would imagine that number will go above five, but um, no doubt about it. Mark Ashton is working tirelessly to get these deals done. I would say they're on pace with the transfer window six in by the 9th of July, as we speak, I think it is mm. good business, but the, uh, the biggest signings, those attacking signings are, are still to come and there's, there's a bit of time yet. So um, trust the process. Trust the process indeed. Let's move on to outs then, Stu. We've, we've done the ins. Outs, I suppose we have to start with another one of the bomb squad currently training with the under-23s. We've seen the likes of Jack Lancaster and, and Andre Dizel already go. Teddy Bishop is also down there with the under-23s. And, and there was a story earlier this week that he's been linked with, with numerous clubs on his way out the Ipswich Town door. Yeah, I can't see any way back for, for Teddy Bishop, um, unfortunately. He's um, much like Dazelles and Lancaster's. There's a sense that maybe um, a fresh start will be good both for him and for the football club. He's, he's in with the 23s at the moment. He's attracting uh, a bit of interest. Our understanding is that, that Lincoln are the ones, uh, League One rivals, Lincoln are the ones that kind of lead that chase at the moment. They're the ones that have kind of come to the table formally. Middles, uh, sorry, Portsmouth and MK Dons uh, as well also of registered a bit of interest without taking it further. I think that they've got to wait for, for other things to happen there before they could make their approach. So Lincoln in the box seat, a little bit of interest from Hearts as well, north of the border as well, which is interesting. But um, 
yeah, looks like a, a matter of when, not if Teddy Bishop departs. OK, and ju just one final a potential, well, probable outgoing this week. Um, Town look like they're going to lose one of their promising youngsters to the old rivals, Norwich City. Liam Gibbs, a youngster who was a star of the, the run to the, the semi-finals of the FA Youth Cup, also made his senior debut last season. Um, but it doesn't look like he's going to be a town player for much longer, Stu. No, and it always stings when you see a, a player make that, that cross-border switch. Um, I can see this both from player and club's point of view at the moment. Liam Gibbs is a very highly rated player. There's the small bits that I've seen of him in the EFL trophy, and obviously he made his debut in that game against Charlton last season when the injuries in midfield were stacking up. He looks a really good player, and, and Brian Clue, who has worked with some some top young players in his time has, has been on record as saying he's one of the best he's worked with. So that's how highly Liam Gibbs is thought of. They offered him a contract towards the back end of, of last year. Um, that was that was turned down um, and Ipswich didn't raise their offer. I think there's a sense from Ipswich that they need to take back a bit of control from, from players and it needs to be a place where you, you want to be here for the right reasons. And Paul Cook's talking about players being totally committed to the cause. Um, so, But from Liam Gibbs's point of view, he probably felt that his potential was um, more befitting of a, of a contract higher than the standard sort of youth contract that gets offered to players. So they just found themselves at a bit of an impasse by the sounds of things. Norwich have, have swooped. I think there is a... It's ninety nine percent certain that he's going there. Is my is my gut feeling? One other club has come to the table very late in the day. There was a few Premier League clubs looking at him: Manchester United, Villa, Leeds, others. Mm. I'm not sure who that late party is, but they may have left it a little bit too late. Um, but the fact that it is Norwich makes it that that little bit harder to take, doesn't it? But um, I still wish him well because he he seems like a good grounded lad. Um, just maybe. Uh, just not the right time for him to come through at Ipswich, given the juncture that they're at. Mm, as you say, a local lad from just down the road in Bury. So uh, best of luck to him wherever he continues his career. It doesn't look like it's going to be Ipswich Town. Stu, that brings us to the end of Ipswich Town transfer talk for another week. It still remains very exciting times at Ipswich Town, a summer like no other. Um, if you haven't yet listened to it, go back and listen to Stuart and Andy's interview with Mark Ashton, that exclusive chat with the town CEO. That's available on our KOA podcast and also will be available audio wise as a video on YouTube. Follow us obviously across the weekend as town get back into action at Dartford and keep following us for all the latest transfer talk, rumours and news through all the usual channels. And we'll be back next week with another edition of Ipswich Town Transfer Talk.